Tell me what you guys think. Feedback's welcome, y'all. Please subscribe and follow. Links are on the screen. What's up, everyone? I'm Jason Jefferson. I do spray paint art. I've really never kind of made a video like this before, so bear with me. But if you notice, it's a time lapse. It's still pretty cool, but we're going to make this fast, easy, and simple. And maybe you'll learn something along the way. But I'm going to have to talk fast to keep up with the video. So here we go. And we're going to drop it like it's hot. The process is really kind of always the same. I personally start top to bottom. And the skies really are pretty neat because you can kind of mix it up. What I mean is there's just different ways to make skies with spray paint and still make them look awesome. Now this, uh, this one here is Dusk Mountain. Now I'm not like a Bob Ross style teacher, so this is peanuts for you guys, okay? I'm going for a streaky sky look. I love, I love the streaky sky. Those are my thing. Initially I just kind of put my base coat down, that, uh, that dark wine color, you know? And then I, uh, then I overlay it again. I might mix it a couple times with different colors like purple or a little bit of blue or something like that. And then I'll, uh, I'll take that yellow, right? And I'll put it right over the top and I'll make it a little circle. Obviously you've seen that. When I do that, mind you, I wipe it while it's still wet too, okay? To get the desired effect. If you're not quick enough, it dries up on you. Remember, you got clear, that's what you use to re-wet. Also, if you're just kind of like learning still, the clear, it's important that you understand that you're not supposed to puddle it when you use it to re-wet, okay? That can really make yourself a big headache. So wipe that sky, get that streak going, and then all you got left to do is flick the stars on there. Don't overdo those either, just lightly from straight over the top. Skies are skies. It's one thing for me to tell you, it's another thing for you to just do it. The more you do it, the more you're gonna pick it up and get it. So keep at it, and you'll you'll be a pro in no time. Let's move on to the mountains. Base coat. You see what I'm doing here, okay? This is the base coat of the mountains. I'm shaping them right now. You don't want to do too pointy of mountains. You don't want to do them too straight. You want to get little jagged lines in there and kind of like taper them out a little bit. And I, I personally start with black. Also, on these mountains, I do it Bob Ross style. Palette knife techniques, application. On a side note, well, I'm using a couple different sizes of palette knives, okay? Uh, I'm not going to explain to you today why or how, all right? Just know that I do. And this is the base coat. It can change from mountain to mountain. Sometimes colors change, sometimes shapes change. But this is not the only way to make mountains also, by the way. You can use like magazine paper or newspaper and literally pull a mountain from nothing by swiping it. It's pretty cool. I'll show you another video. On these ones, as beautiful as they are, I only went with two colors, black and white, okay? And then some of the white mixed in with the black to get a gray, okay? And now I use that gray to my advantage to, well, here again, we're gonna go and say, we're gonna call it lighting, all right? Basic, but beautiful. You don't have to always go into extreme detail with a lot of colors to get the desired outcome of something beautiful that belongs in a gallery. Especially in painting, sometimes less is more. In the meantime, clearly I'm using a brush as well. So I want to get the little details in there as well, okay? So I'm usually, right there, I'm using black. And then, you know, of course, with the uh, cliff edges and whatnot, you can, while it's still wet, you want to get in, get in there with your palette knife, your small palette knife, and just pull down with the paint. And you can even use scrape it a little bit, and that's going to give you those nice little edges and those uh, those uh, definitions that you need to really kind of make it happen. Now we're going to get into the mist. So I misted it, boom, layer by layer, to run that mist and get those uh, little rock formations there, hit the uh, little piece of paper with the white spray paint on the edge of it, layer by layer, and then you're going to run your palette knife back through and kind of catch some extra, extra details. After you do that, you're going to go ahead and lay the mountain right along the base there, okay? You're going to basically make it match. Uh, mirror image and that is where you go in kind of make it simple but not overly difficult and complicated like you did the main mountains because you're going to smear it all together just kind of make it look similar in shape wise and then when it's still wet after you get it to the point where you like it it's close you wipe it with your hand okay lightly but just enough to smear it make it look like water along the bottom edge there you want to get a little thin white line that creates your water's edge when you create your water's edge that's going to separate it and that's going to make it look like a mirror image with a reflection off the water. That said, you're done.
Okay. Uh, clean it up how you want. Make sure you catch your outer edges. I do mine black. And that's it. Hit me up, guys. You guys got my information. Please subscribe. I would love that. And I will talk to you later. Peace. I hope you like this.